All right, so Tulane head coach Willie Fritz has taken the Houston head coaching job, moving up to the Big 12 to replace Dana Holgerson. So that means Tulane's open. So they were looking at 11 candidates here for the Tulane job, and this is a pretty solid job. I mean, really, Willie Fritz has turned it in probably one of the best group of five, if not the best group of five job, because SMU has probably been the best group of five job as far as potential. They're moving to the ACC, though, so now they're – a power five school, not a group of five school. And with how the playoff is expanding to 12 teams, one group of five is getting in every year. So you have the potential here to make the playoff every year and cause some havoc. You know what I mean? So you've got this job, which was, like I said, arguably the best. You got Liberty with Jamie Chadwell. So you were definitely going to be in contention every year for that playoff spot. And so this might attract some serious names here. So what it's really going to come down to as far as you'll see once I get a little more to the candidates, and we are going to pick the candidate, so I'm going to narrow it down the further we get. I'm going to X off some names and let you know by the end of the video who I think they'll hire. Now, this is just the beginning stages. You know I mean? This is only like two days old since it's been announced that he was leaving for Houston, so there's still some fresh names that I'm hearing here. Uh, we're going to try our best to see if we can pick it right. We did pick the Oregon State hire right, so we get everything right every now and then. You know, Not everything, but we'll get a thing or two right. So what it's going to come down to with this job is are they going to hire somebody with two lane ties or they're going to hire somebody from the outside? You know what I mean? Some of these candidates are going to be realistic. Some of them we'll get to mainly one. I don't know if they could pull, but everybody else I think they could pull. So first off here, first name on the list, Alex Atkins, Florida State offense coordinator. His name has been tied to pretty much every coaching search that I've done that I've covered so far this year. And usually where there's smoke, there's fire. That means he's putting his name out there, trying to get a fill. Now, most of those were for Power 5 jobs, so I don't know if he's going to get one of those. I don't think he'll get one of those just yet. But the reason I think he'll be interested in this job, yes, it's a good group of five job, but also he has worked at Tulane before. He's been at Tulane as the offensive line coach back in the uh, back in the day, not too long ago. I think about less than 10 years ago, he was the offensive line coach there. And so I could see him trying to go back as his first head coaching job, do this for a year or two, then bump on up to – a bigger job. Our surprising name I saw thrown around with this major Applewhite South Alabama offense coordinator, currently former Houston head coach took over after Tom Herman left. Uh, he's had good success as an OC as a head coach. He didn't do as good at Houston, but it's kind of tough to follow. Tom Herman had that program rocking, you know, better than it has in probably forever. And major Applewhite could be looking to get his name back up there. If they're looking for somebody with head coaching experience, you know what I mean? This might not be a bad candidate here. Next up, Pete Golding, Ole Miss defense coordinator, was the Alabama defense coordinator before this year, came over with Lane, with Lane Kiffin, and has done a solid job as an SEC D coordinator, really as an SEC coordinator in general, offense, defense, special teams. You're going to get a little more preference, I guess, when it comes to these jobs. You know what I mean? You could kind of – I won't say have your pick of jobs, but you're going to be levels above some other guys in the candidate recruiting process because you're – and the SEC, you're a Power 5 school. Next up, David Johnson, Florida State running backs coach. Similar to Alex Atkins, did work at Tulane a little bit further back. So he has some ties there. Could get in the interview room off of ties alone. Now, it's going to be tough to out interview your offense coordinator just because of title, you know, but you never know. All right, so the most interesting name on this list, and if you could get this guy – this is the guy. Next up here, John Sumrall, Troy head coach. All right, so he is also coached at Tulane, was the defense coordinator there way back when, has had a ton of success at Troy. Uh, arguably one of the better group of five schools. You know what I mean? They have, I think, two losses this year. He has them rocking. And John Sumrall, heck of a coach. If you could hire him, if you can pull him, this is the guy because he has Tulane ties and he's had success, proven success as a head coach at the group of five level. Now – the thing with him is I don't know if this is a lateral move. Like I said, he's got Troy rolling right now. So do you take that lateral job? I don't think so. And I've seen his name thrown around with some SEC schools. Uh, he, was a, he was a candidate in the Mississippi State coaching search. I kind of thought he might get that one, but I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is running, guys. Cold outside. Uh, but, yeah, I don't – if you could pull John Summerall, this is the guy you go get. But I'm, I feel like he's going to hold out for a better job, a power five job, even if it's not this cycle. I think he'll be con content at Troy for, you know, one more year until something opens up he can go get. All right, next up, 
Jason Candle, Toledo head coach. So this is another guy that has had proven success as a group of five coach. I think Toledo's got 10 plus wins this year. And he has them, like I said, with 10 plus wins. Why would you not hire a group of five coach that has proven success? Now, I don't know if he's a fit necessarily. And similar to Troy's coach, I don't know if you make that lateral move if you're him, you know, unless Tulane is willing to, you know, pony up the money. I don't, I don't really know if you make that lateral job there, that lateral move, because you've already got Toledo on, no pun intended, rocketed up. And do you make that lateral move and, you know, try to figure out how to recruit that area because it's not the same area? You know, I don't know. I don't think so. Next up, Willie Simmons, Ford a and head coach. All right, he's had a lot of success roughly in the area. Tulane is in Louisiana, for those that don't know. But close enough, you know what I mean, there he's had success. I've seen his name thrown around for a couple of other jobs that I've looked at. And so he's putting his name out there as a fielder to see who's interested in him and has had success at Florida A&M. All right, next up, Slade Nagel, Tulane offense coordinator, currently the interim head coach for their bowl game. You know what I mean? While they're trying to figure this process out, while Willie Foots goes to Houston. And this could be just a process to where, you know, sometimes you'll see this, they to make it easy, we just go with the next guy. You know, maybe take the interim coach, he becomes the head coach. Look at Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame and – you could do that here. It might make the whole process easier. We've already got everything set in stone. We've got our ways. We've got our core values for the team. Everything can just keep going smoothly. So don't be surprised if he gets the job. But with that being said, you've got some pretty good candidates here that I think it'd be hard not to hire. Next up, Joe Sloan, LSU quarterbacks coach. Doesn't necessarily have any ties here, but Louisiana. He's coached at LSU, so he has recruiting ties around the area. As coach Jaden Daniels this year, Jaden Daniels, arguably the Heisman front runner right now. So Joe Sloan already know, obviously knows what he's doing, an offense coordinator. Uh, sorry, as quarterback coach, and then probably offense coordinator, you know, knows what he's doing and has, like I said, recruiting ties in the Louisiana area. Mike could pull one of the guys he was recruiting at LSU to be the quarterback, you know. So interesting prospect nonetheless. Next up, Blake Baker, Missouri defense coordinator. So this is an interesting one here. Missouri, obviously, probably the biggest surprise of the year as far as overperforming people's expectations. But Blake Baker did play at Tulane, so he's definitely going to probably have interest to get back there. And has some interesting recruiting ties. Did coach at Miami as well. So he's kind of been around the block a little bit. Knows that kind of whole southeastern area, you know, the SEC area. Probably can pull some solid guys as recruits. All right, next up, this is the last name on this list. I've got 11 here. Rich Rodriguez, Jacksonville State head coach, has coached at Tulane way back when, before he took over at West Virginia, before he took over Arizona, before he took over Michigan. I feel like Rich Rodriguez, if you could pull him, it's a good head coach. He's a proven Power 5 winner. You know what I mean? Like I said, he's won, heck, almost won a national championship at West Virginia, went to Michigan, had success at Arizona, went in the New Year's Six Bowl, Fiesta Bowl. So if you could somehow pull him, he's a good proven head coach. Got Jacksonville State in the bowl game this year. But I don't. I feel like he's one that, you know, he's been around the block. He's content with just chilling at Jacksonville State probably until he's done. All right, so let's go ahead and break these down. Let's see if we can figure out who we're going to hire. You know what I mean? So like I said, it really comes down to do you go outside the Tulane coaching tree or do you hire from within? So that being said, let's go ahead and cross off a couple names there. Major Applewhite, I don't really think he makes sense for me unless for some reason there. Oh, my bad. Not what I'm about to do. Unless for some reason, you know, he's just trying to, you know, they're trying to hire somebody with proven head coaching experience. That's always a possibility. And that kind of changes who he would hire. But I don't think Major Applewhite is realistic here. I don't think that's the hire they go with. It just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, let's see. Next up, we've got crossing off the list. Let's go Joe Sloan. All right, so like I said, he has – one sec. All right, so he has some recruiting ties in the area probably, you know. My computer is tripping right now. Has some uh, ties in the area with being, you know, part of LSU, being in Louisiana, can might pull some interest from recruits. But do you hire a quarterback's coach to make that jump that quick? I don't think so. All right, next up, I'm going to cost off the list, Rich Rodriguez. Again, if you could pull this guy, not a bad hire at all, but I don't think he leaves. I feel like he's probably content where he is because, I mean, 
like I said, he's been around the block. He knows what he can do. And does he really want to make that transition and try to start a new program? I don't think so. All right, next name we're going to cross off this list, Jason Candle. Let's go ahead and cross both these names, actually. John Summerall and Jason Candle. All right, so with Summerall, it's a little different. He has ties. He's coached there before, like I said. But both of these guys, Candle and Summerall, have their teams rolling. Troy and Toledo, arguably better than Tulane right now. Now, it might not be, but, you know, I mean, you could make that argument. They have the same records pretty much. So do you really want to leave that program and make a lateral move when you could probably wait out your time and eventually get a Power 5 job in a year or two? I think you waited out. All right, so we got what here? Six names left. All right, so I'm going to mark off Willie Simmons, Florida a and head coach. All right, again, I'm seeing his name thrown around a lot, but with that being said, I don't know. I don't think he fits here. I feel like they, you know, they've got some in-house hires they could make and might make more sense to me. All right, so next one I'm going to cross off the list, Pete Golding. Now, if you could pull a Power 5 coordinator, it might be tempting because this guy's got – he's been at Alabama. He knows Nick Saban. And not that, that has anything to do with his coaching, but usually, you know, if you can get somebody off Saban's coaching tree, it might be an interesting hire. And he's got Kiffin, you know what I mean? So – this guy probably has seen some good head coaches and kind of taken some notes here and there as far as how to build a good program. All right, next thing I'm going to cross off the list, David Johnson, Florida State running backs coach. Now, he did play there. So, interesting name, but like I said, I think his offense coordinator is going to interview for this job. It's going to be tough to hire him over the OC. All right, so it comes down to three names here. Let me get rid of these guys' names so you can kind of see it a little better. Let's go ahead and get these three names up here. All right, so Alex Atkins, Florida State Offense Coordinator, Slade Nagel, Interim Head Coach, Offense Coordinator, Blake Baker, Missouri, D.C. So all these guys have two lane ties. you got Alex Atkins, which coached there, Slade Nagel, which currently coached there, Blake Baker, which played there. All right, so everybody has a different tie here. It really depends on what direction you want to go. I don't think you can go wrong with this hire. Uh, Nagel has had that offense rolling. You know, they've done pretty good the past couple years. And – like I said, do you want to keep that train rolling like that Willie Fritz set up? Like, hey, he's done a good job. He's had a good staff. Let's go ahead and keep that staff. Or do you bring in a Power 5 coordinator to take over? And so what I think is going to happen, I think you got to go the Power 5 route. I'm sorry, Slade Nagel. You've done a good job, buddy, but I just don't think it's the right one. All right, so it comes down to Atkins and Baker. Baker played there. Atkins coached there. So if we're going off of – who has had more success this year? You could argue with these two teams because Missouri, Blake Baker has got them from bottom tier defense to like middle of the tier SEC. Alex Atkins has got Florida State's offense doing pretty good. Except in that bowl game, I don't know, 55 yards past. And I don't know. But I've seen Atkins' name thrown around enough in these coaching shirts. I feel like he's going to get one of these. And I don't know if he'll hold out for a power five job, but if I'm predicting, I think Alex Atkins is the guy that Tulane is going to hire. And I think that's the direction. That's the direction they're going to go. But that is my thoughts on this coaching search, on these candidates. These are some of the names I've seen thrown around. But like I said, it's still early, so this could be different in you know a day or two. But who do you think they'll hire? Let me know down in the comments section. Who would you hire and who do you think they'll hire? Let me know. Comment down below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe.